From Spotify, please welcome Jeff Rossi. Hey, everyone. How's everybody doing? Uh, my name is Jeff Rossi. I'm the uh, Global Head of Business Marketing for Spotify. Um, I'm here. Oh, I hear a whoop. I'll take it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I'm here today to talk about Spotify um, as a leader uh, in the space, um, in the streaming space, uh, not from a competitive standpoint, just from an understanding of, of what we've done and what we've seen. And Spotify, since its inception, streamed 25 billion hours. There's a lot of things we learned. And, um, I want to take you guys through some of the learnings we have that we hopefully think are applicable to you guys. And uh, hopefully, you know, we're really excited to be here. And so let's jump in. First learning, if you're not on demand, you're old. What do you mean by this? Uh, what it means is that streaming is, as we know, is the dominant use case uh, for content right now. And that I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to do a little bragging. I'm going to show you a picture of my vacation home, my, my whip, uh, my home theater, the kids say. Uh, I, these are mine, but I don't actually own any of these. And that, that's kind of what we're talking about, is I still have an affinity towards that house, that car, and that, uh, that, that content that I've reached, uh, even though I don't own it. And that act of streaming content is what we're going to see becomes the dominant use case by which content gets distributed. So we expect that in two years, at least streaming music is going to be, uh, reach a parity with downloads and physical uh, purchases of music, and by 2020, you can see how much it's taken over the marketplace. And what's really interesting for you guys is that unlike if I buy a CD and I go away, or I buy a DVD and I go away, uh, or even download an MP3 and play it on my iPod, what happens when you stream is you're connected. You're connected via a device that tells you what, what's going on, what device, what time of day, who they are, so that we actually know a lot. We know a lot not just about content. I'm just going to stop hitting my mic. Um, so <laughs> we know a lot about content. We also know when people are listening to content. We know that when um, the royal baby was born, there was a huge spike in songs called Charlotte. We know that when Germany won the World Cup, there was a huge spike in the song We Are the Champions by Queen. We know that when gay, uh, when gay marriage was uh, approved, that the song Same Love by Macklemore uh, saw a huge spike, which is great. And while all of you here in Boston uh, saw this, clap if you... And if you don't think that was a cheap way to get a applause, you're totally lying to yourself. I'm actually a Giants fan, and it took everything to not put a David Tyree helmet catch up here, but I figured I don't want to get chased out with pitchforks. Um, what we see is not, uh, is not just this terrible choice to throw a pass play. What we actually see is, um, <laughs> is a spike at the halftime show that we see that Katy Perry, who's our most streamed female artist, actually doubled the amount of streams the day after the Super Bowl. And, and Miss Elliott, who hasn't been in the spotlight for a while, when she came out, seven times the amount of streams. That's what we start to see. And we can tell you guys all of this, that we know there's a correlation between uh, you know, human behaviors and what happens when you stream content. And we know that um, we can actually go back and, and tell labels this. And so, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this movie, Moneyball. Uh, Moneyball is a movie based on a book. The movie is about Brad Pitt and his relationship with his daughter. The book is actually a book about baseball, but moreover, <laughs> uh, moreover, it's a book about data. It's, it's a book about a general manager who had a very small budget and had to compete with the likes of the Red Sox and the Yankees. Uh, and he made it to the playoffs every year because he got new data sets. And he was able to derive value in players that did not cost as much money. And he was able to put this team together because he had data. And that's what we're doing to the labels. We're going back and telling them things um, like, this is Hunter Hayes, an up-and-coming country artist. He released an EP called 21. And they came to us and they said, where should we have his tour? And we actually came back with the 21 tour dates that he should be planning against. We partnered with Justin Bieber to actually make sure that he, did someone just woo Justin Bieber? <laughs> I'll take that too. Um, so uh, just, Justin Bieber, uh, we partnered with the label to make sure that he became the most uh, streamed single in Spotify history with 21 streams in five days. And what we want to start doing is, is helping you guys and what we think the marketplace will get to is money balling, that idea of money balling the, 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 the marketing and advertising industry. How can we provide you guys with new data sets? Again, not just about content, not just about connectivity, but about context. And that's really where it starts to become interesting. Context is the new variable in the content distribution model. So we know that when you're, when you're streaming, not only are you listening to more information, you're listening to it in more places. So this, is, this graph actually shows by size uh, where non-streamers listen to music. You can see here it's mostly in the car, on the radio, and CDs, and iPods, and streamers actually listen to it in many more places. They don't lose the car, but they add places. And I know a lot of you would probably be interested to reach the 23% who are shopping. 
that's really what we're talking about, is connected devices start to distribute content in new and engaging ways. And so by partnering with the people who are ubiquitous, you can take your message along with them. And so <laughs> there's even goofy things like this. Like we found out that there, so if, you're a pa if you're a packaged goods brand, um, we do half a million <laughs> streams of shower playlists, people singing in the shower every single day, which is kind of crazy. Um, so one really interesting use case is actually the guys here at Hala Hill Holiday. Uh, actually, you can't spell Hill Holiday with a holla. Um, so, sorry about that. I just made that up on the spot. I really apologize. <laughs> um, so uh, this program with Dunkin' Donuts that we found, you can hashtag that one. Um, so, uh, <laughs> so what we've seen here is that we found that there's a spike in people listening to coffee-related playlists uh, from 2 to 3 o'clock, but we didn't see a spike in in-store in activity in Dunkin' Donuts. So we know there's an interest in coffee, but we need to ha make, get foot, feet on ground. So what we actually did is partnered with uh, the group here and the group at Duncan and actually created this event between 2 and 3 o'clock in cities like New York, Philadelphia, LA, Chicago, and right here in Dewey Square in Boston, uh, where we actually put on pop-up shows. And we actually looked at the data and said, who are the artists that people in this area would be interested to hear from? And created a, a really data-driven but fun and exciting, that doesn't look data-driven to me, that looks fun and engaging, but what powered it is a, is a wealth of data and, and really strategic investment from both parties um, to really try and deliver something to clients. So, that's what we're talking about, is that brands who tap into these moments are gonna, are gonna be the winners. I feel like that's like the cheesiest keynote, the win the future statement, but what does it mean? Like, what, what are we talking about? And, and one of the things is we, we have to fundamentally change how we think about segmenting our audience and use all of the data that we have. But we still get calls all the time over at Spotify that say, I wanna reach older adult males, give me classic rock, or I wanna reach young females, so give me pop, or African-American men, so I wanna reach hip hop. That's not how people listen. I mean, you, most people here probably listen to all three of these genres. Heck, it's not even how the music is recorded anymore. Yeah. So why are we doing this? It's the silliest thing. What I care about is the four or five second song. Am I listening to this to get me excited in the morning while I'm running? I don't run. And, or am I excited when... <laughs> or, uh, you know, or am I, I going to use it when I'm putting my children down? And to be fair, I don't have children either. So... Um, <laughs> But that idea of context is really what we have to start thinking about and, and use case. So as we see here, the size of these words correlates to the size of the playlist on Spotify. And we see here that this is just, it happens to be Spotify, but it could be anyone. It could be Hulu who, here talking about um, how they're connected and they understand more. It could be anyone. It's the idea of connectivity. What we have to start looking at is use state. And I know if that song is listened to in a party playlist or a workout playlist, I know the context. And that's really what starts to get exciting is that you can start to deliver the right message at the right time. So when I'm pretend working out in the morning, um, I'm actually, don't, please don't deliver me a pizza ad. And conversely, at 2 in the morning, at ha you know, when I'm eating pizza, don't make me feel bad by giving me a workout ad, even on the same cookie, even on the same individual. And that's what we're talking about, is that really understanding the use case more. So that's what's exciting about streaming, is the connectivity and the data that, that underlies everything there that you guys can take advantage of. But the question becomes, do people care? Or are they choosing these on-demand platforms because they want to avoid ads? And we actually uh, conducted a huge global study with Comscore to ask uh, against three, three distinct groups, non-streamers, uh, streamers of competitive products, and Spotify streamers. And what we saw across the board is that both Spotify and competitive streamers clearly outpaced our competitor in terms of wanting to hear from brands. So then it comes up to both of us to figure out, well, how do we communicate with them? If I'm leaning forward and more engaged with my content, I'm more engaged with the advertisers that engage that uh, communicate to me in that content. And that's really what becomes exciting. And, and that these people want to hear from us, and there's going to be tremendous, tremendous growth. I think we wouldn't be having this here if we thought this was a stagnant marketplace. Uh, we really are excited. Um, at Spotify alone, we see that uh, one out of every two Americans are now streaming music, uh, and they spend over two hours a day. A ton of growth, a ton of uh, engagement. But moreover, what's exciting is not the half that are streaming, but the half that are going to stream. That's where I get excited, is that I can start to think about not only are we doing amazing things, but we're going to see tremendous growth. And it's really still the early days. And together, we can start to figure out what's the communication strategy that we need to have with, with consumers to have the best conversations. So that's it for me. Uh, hopefully, you guys found this engaging. And uh, I think I have a fireside chat. So thank you guys very much. Joining Jeff, here's Trillia's John Dukakis. Good afternoon. Hey. Thank you for that. That was very interesting. I, uh, I was in the music business for, for many years, and 
to say that research uh, has changed would be an understatement. When I started, we really didn't know how many units were being sold. We didn't know how many times things were spinning uh, on the radio. It was, it was all uh, through word of mouth, uh, fueled by God knows what. <laughs> Um, and and that's, that's changed a great deal. And it, it is very much like Moneyball, the, the old days of Moneyball, right. where you'd have uh, a lot of guys sitting around uh, pretending they knew uh, that their ears were to the, uh, the ground and, and they knew. So it's, it's really interesting to see uh, how this works. Um, you know, it's, it's not exactly as in the gutter as the GOP uh, uh, presidential race, but uh, the streaming music uh, food fight uh, that's, that's going on right now <laughs> yeah. is, is fascinating to, uh, to many of us. And I, I want to make some news here today. So, um, you know, Apple's free trial is up. Mm -hmm. uh, Pandora's stock is tanked, uh, to say the least. And Tidal uh, appears to be the victim of a <laughs> tidal wave, uh, not, uh, they haven't started anything. Um, and you're sitting pretty pretty right now. Spotify is doing in a very good place, but you've got a few things on the horizon, uh, as I think all brands do, uh, uh, particularly in this, in this space, because you've got Apple TV orders started today, and, um, and you, YouTube Red is, is out there, yep. too. There's a lot of streaming going on. We've talked about some of it. Tell us about the music side. Yeah. The, Competitive set. No, I, I, you know, it, it, that's what keeps us up at night. Um, that's what really fuels our innovation. Is you know, I, I know that you guys here at an agency probably feel a competitiveness, and that's what pushes you guys forward. It's the same with us in our competitive space. Um, the best thing I can say is there's no better validation that we're doing something right than telling me that Apple's coming in and mimicking my model. Um, so you know, I, when ha Apple got into I, Apple got, created Pandora, and then they said, no, we're going to create Spotify. So there's nothing better validation. I'd rather be in a place that Apple's getting into than a place that Apple's getting out of. Um, so I do think that there's going to be a few horse race, um, maybe two, maybe three, we'll see. Um, we're going to be one of those horses, um, and that's what gets me excited. And then I think it really pushes us as a ubiquitous platform. We don't have to worry about what operating system you have. You know, we were talking backstage that in seven years, uh, by 2020, the average house is going to have 500 connected devices. We'd like to be on as many of them as possible. If you need music on your toaster, Spotify would like to be the music toaster. <laughs> no, well, it's interesting. I, I found this uh, quote uh, from 2007 by uh, somebody talking about how uh, streaming would never work because people want to own their music. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Steve Jobs, uh, who uh, a rare miscalculation, but it, it sounds like he course corrected that uh, when he got out of the Pandora business. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I, um, I actually am a former Apple employee, too. Uh, I spent a few years at Apple before I came here. Um, and it's a wonderful company, and they do a lot of great things, and they build a lot of great hardware. Um, the software, I think, we, is going to be interesting. I think that they've had, they've, you know, you look at some of the things that they've launched, there's been mixed success. I think there's always beautiful design, um, and it's about utility. I wouldn't be surprised if they get music right. Um, we'll see if they get there. They've been knocked around a little bit in the press. Um, and you're going to start to see, I think, uh, some evolution there um, in sort of the software game. The good thing is that we're sitting on a 10-year head start. And, you know, we have, like I said, 25 billion hours streamed that we can go back and say, what has worked? What have we learned? What can we do? What can we change? How can we? And, and that head start, we need to keep. And that's, that's what literally, if you ask me what keeps me up at night, that's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> so so uh, ad-supported is a, mm -hmm. a word that's been thrown around uh, here today for obvious reasons. Um, you provide both. Yep. Um, what, what's that ratio, and where would you like it to be, and where do you think it's going to go? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, right now it's 25% paid, 75% free. And that's pretty consistent in all of the 58 countries that we're in. Um, it's been pretty consistent from our onset, that percentage ratio. Um, it would be more profitable for us if that premium grew. Um, it, we're making a large investment as a company in uh, our ad-supported business. We've basically created a whole new ad stack invested in headcount. We have a whole new team. The advertising side of the business um, has tripled in size uh, of late. And um, I really think that we've built not just a way to offset costs, um, but actually a best-in-class advertising solution. So um, that's how we make the difference. If we only operate from a defense to say just plug holes, we're dead in the water. And what we've really done is made investments with acquisitions of data companies, acquisitions of, uh, of talent and new video products. Um, all of this has happened to stay ahead of that, to make sure we build that best-in-class ad solution so that we can keep that ratio healthy. Um, if we were to move in, 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 I would say in Stockholm, we are more uh, over-leveraged in premium. 
Um, and it's funny when you hear the salespeople say, oh, too many people have premium, and everyone else in the company is like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> that is a wonderful problem to have because it's more profitable. But um, it's good. I think we, we, we've found a, a healthy space. And as the ad solutions um, continue to grow, we'll see that that becomes, um, that, that we not just mitigate losses, but actually become a leader in the company. You, uh, it was in the middle of something else, but you said the V word, the video word. Yes. Uh, curious about how that, uh, how that fits into things now and where you see that going. So we've launched a uh, new video content distribution. Uh, we've had video ads now for a while. It's the beginning of a user session, which is always in viewability. We, can, we do um, a value exchange, 30 second ad for 30 minutes uh, uh, ad free. Um, and that's, a, that's always been on the ad side. But video as a content distribution is something that we've been rolling out. We're testing the UI, and we've done it to a certain percentage of our users. But we used to tell a story about, we have 30 million tracks. Pandora has 1 million tracks. Realistically, no human could listen to 29 million tracks. It's sort of a, it's a, it's a bit of a red herring. So what we did is we turned everything around and said, let's stop with the tracks, and let's start with the user. And let's program against this user. Let, I want to understand if they're commuting, if it's their morning day at work, are they heading home, are they at night, are they relaxing? And let's program content to them. Let's create playlists. And maybe it's not music, maybe it's podcasts, and maybe it's videos. So now we've done, started doing a short, short form videos delivered to um, users, both free and premium, um, so that on my morning commute, I might watch highlights from the Tonight Show last night. Or at night, I might see clips from the Today Show earlier in the day. Um, and we could start, and we have relationships with Viacom, with Comedy Central, ESPN, all the major content publications to get that content distributed because we start with the user. And we start with what, you know, maybe I want to listen to music, maybe I don't, maybe I want to watch a video. And just making sure that we, um, we have the right content for them at the right point. And the context, as I said before, you know, delivering it in the right context. You're going to be, you've been competing with Pandora and Rhapsody and, mm -hmm. and, and Apple. Uh, it sounds like you're opening yourself up to other uh, competitors that <laughs> yeah. have more mature <laughs> offerings uh, in this space. Yes, and I think that if I try to, you know, go head to head right now with a video publisher and say, you know, we are Hulu, we are whomever, um, it, it wouldn't work. And so I think it's about context, about saying, you know what, video is part of your content uh, suite and we need to deliver content irrespective of platform. Um, and who knows, maybe it gets longer in form, maybe it becomes more real time, all these different changes we can have. But first we have to mine the data to understand like, what do people want to hear? What are they reacting to? So the first thing we're doing is short form video and we are opening ourselves to, uh, to competitors. And I think it gets exciting because we can start to think about in the same way that Netflix, Amazon, and Hulu have started creating you know, uh, new programming for themselves and proprietary programming, we can start getting into that space as well. So interesting futures. Speaking of Hulu, and, and, and Peter Naylor uh, had, had been asked uh, about how many streaming services uh, are, do we, are we expecting that people are going to have. Um, and I, so I would imagine that that may keep you up at night mm -hmm. as well, that uh, if there are so many and they're uh, cross-pollinating a lot, uh, could be of concern. Yeah, I think that that's, uh, it, it definitely is, you know, are people going to be spending uh, more and more time um, on different communication services and content services? Uh, we really feel, and that's one of the reasons why we have this strategy, is because we want to make sure that we're not losing people to other, sort of that leaky bucket. Like, how do we start making sure that people who want to see some video, if we are a video solution, we can be there for them? Or if, um, you know, people want to go watch movies, go sign up for Netflix, we do think there's going to be a suite of services you sign up for. I think what's keeping people right now is live sports and news. I think things that are real time that they can't get away from. Um, and I think that's going to be interesting to figure out how companies like us, like Hulu, like all these people get into that. Because there's the, that real time nature that no one's solved yet. And that's sort of been the, the last thing that everyone's been grabbing into to keep terrestrial radio, terrestrial television stations afloat. Um, Last question: uh, The shower data. You, how do you <laughs> gather that? Is that a? It's, Watch a lot of people in the shower, and no. Um, what we do is so uh, on Spotify. What you can do is uh, very similar to creating a playlist uh, or a mixtape. Um, you actually can. We have cu curated by expert playlists. We also have user generated playlists. And those playlists, you can name anything you want. Um, so we can actually mine the metadata. It's similar to search and how you can mine metadata tags and start to understand what are people creating. Um, and so what we've seen is that there are all these interesting and unique use cases that uh, we never would have thought of until we mined this data. So there's actually user-generated playlists that people have created named singing in the shower or the like that we can actually go and see this half a million of them. So a lot of data that we can mine um, I'm, from I'm that. I'm sure there's some interesting titles that yes. you come up with uh, too. Can't share them here. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. John, thank you so much.